Welcome to these four short sessions exploring prayer. These sessions are designed to help us to, to push the boundaries of what we understand as prayer, to give that invitation to develop prayer outside of what might be seen as traditional, and importantly, to move from, from a, a one-way flow to enable a dialogue with our holy God. I wonder, have you seen those programs on TV where the, the occupants are looking for more rooms, more space, less clutter, but without touching the fabric of their home? The, the architects, they come in and with the wonders of computers, they show how all the walls can suddenly be thrown back to the far extremes of the house and let the owners really see what is possible. Well, these sessions are on similar lines, but without the computer technology, sorry. In each of the sessions, I'll explain what I understand using the theme of each session and possibly invite you to discuss your feelings with others in breakout groups. And after that session, we'll have some time to further discussing groups. But you are not obligated to stay for that, of course. You might wish to take some notes where you sense some resonance with what is being said, which you might consider later. So as we begin, let me ask you a question. Where do we pray? Perhaps pause the video now and ask ourselves that question, where do I pray? It might be in church or in a special place within the house, a prayer corner perhaps. Does that mean that we have special places where we can pray? And does that infer that there are places where we don't expect to pray? George Lings, in his book, Seven Sacred Spaces, invites us to really consider our daily life, where we go and invite God into every nook and cranny, as it were, of our lives. He first starts by considering the cell. Well, that's not a great start, is it, to me? But in the olden days, before my time, religious folk might retreat to their cell, perhaps in a monastery, to pray. They'd be on their own, maybe have a book of prayers they might read every day or each day of the week. This is back to possibly having a prayer corner or a space. Are there further spaces where we can pray though? How about when we commute to work or go to the shops? On that journey, perhaps there is time when the traffic has stopped. What well, again? Frustration gets to me and the, there's that time to pray. Also, why am I feeling like this? Oh, oh, look at that car. Oh, wow. Oh, they look quite sad. I wonder what's going on in their life. Can I pray there and then? Oh, not for the traffic to speed up so I can get to my meeting. We'll look at that again in our last session. But for our world, the people around us, unknown by name, but loved by God? Oh, and when that person cuts me up at the junction, oh, what's brought their frustration to fever pitch today? Can I respond differently? We move on to eating. How about when we eat, can we pray then? I I'm thinking more than saying prayers at the start of a meal, grace, as we might call it, as we talk across the table with others, or perhaps at the TV if we're on our own, which is showing the news, or as we scroll on our mobile. No, no, don't at me now with, because of devices at the table, but can we pray at this time? Now, I'm not talking about saying a prayer as we do in church, full liturgy of words, but a response to what we have seen with God, and not just to God, but with God. What is God saying to us there and then about what we have seen or heard or experienced? Remember that we might do this when we catch a snack in town or over that coffee with your friend or on our own. Or in the cafe or restroom with our colleagues at work. Just a few words with God, listening to God. 
Ah, work, mm. what, what, or whatever that entails for you. Can we pray, not for the success at work, but for the connections that it brings? A good question might be, what brought life to me through some aspect of work? What brought life to me? Joy. And what of our downtime, or if we're retired, our uptime? When our hobbies or time outside can bring that joy, that peace, what might we wish to say to God then? Now, I like running. The longer the distance, the better. As I jog around the roads, I see so many things. Yes, there is the nature or the tree lined roads in Moss Park, but also the shops in Pollock Shores and Gifnock, the cars on the M77, and I'm hopefully trying to listen to the birds singing. I have time when I'm running, gasping for breath, to think through some past scenes from yesterday, last week, possibly even imagining scenes for the next few days and wonder with God how I might react. It's a conversation with God and I have time to listen. Well, I certainly can't speak at the moment because I'm running, but I have time to listen. I'm thinking when I get back from my run, what if I time to rest? Sleep. We'll look at a in a further session at prayers which reflect back over a period of time. But when going to bed can be, and I do say can be, a good time to pause with God. Yes, we might fall asleep. But this is a time which is so far from the church where is, is it the building or is it the people? But we are still in God's loving arms. And we also reflect on um, it's in the darkness. But God is the one of the day and the night, the light and the dark. What might we wish to bring to God in a few words? And lastly, we return to the chapel and the cell, familiar places of prayer. Now, I'm not dismissing them, I'm not, but they can be formal and structured, albeit much of our life is not built as so. It's chaotic, reactive, responding to life's changing circumstances. Maybe that's how we can pray also. So I offer this over to you now an exercise for you this week, so you can see how I liked being a teacher. It's homework time. I didn't get a great response then at the class either, but never mind. I try again, homework time. Could we consider our day or night, depends on what we're like, and ponder how we might pray. This is where I can converse with God, be with God. This isn't looking or closing our eyes on reading a set prayer which may not fit our circumstances or context, but using words from our hearts. It may not even be correcting grammar, but these words are of love and of concern from us to God and from God speaking back to us. Time may not be so much of a constraint now, as we have 24 hours from which to pray, and importantly, whenever and wherever. Amen.